Hello, this is Cindy. Welcome to my channel. And today we are going to turn these into these. We need pockets. This is a mass make of this type of five fold pocket. And let me show you what it does. I have a little piece of paper here to, to show you. So this is a pocket where you can put Actually, let me take this one. It's a little bit easier to see. You can put something here. You can put something in the inside. It's harder to do this because at the moment it's not attached to anything. Here, so it's one, two, three, four, five, six different places. It's I call it a five-fold pocket because if you attach this completely, then you only have five folds, but if you just attach around the edge and make this a pocket, you have six folds. So this is an incredible fold, and I apologize if you watched Friday's video, you saw me do this fold and then say, I'll link to the video down below. And then I went and I looked through all my videos and I never did a demonstration on this, and I apologize for that. So let me do it quick. So for this, you need uh, basically an eight and a half by 11 sheet. And I have four sheets here. I'm gonna do it four different, with four different weights of um, paper so that you can see how it works with different weights of paper and different patterns of paper. So the first one, I, basically what I have is I, I have, this is a slightly heavier than computer paper page. It is one side print. Um, this was from a pad of paper that I think I got at Big Lots probably 15 or 20 years ago. I've had it for quite a while. So time to use it up. It has some pretty butterflies on it and we'll, we'll use it up and fold it up. It's not a particular pattern that I would use necessarily as a junk journal. So let's use it up. This came from a quilting magazine. Um, so it's a magazine page, but it has a pretty good edge here. So we're going to use that. This came out of an atlas. It has a rough edge. Um, I have Europe on one side and England on the other. We'll see how that works out. And then this page is from, uh, this is from a recollections kit. Uh, this one is 65 pounds, 176 GSM or GM grams, GSM. I don't know. Anyway, I don't, I go by pounds. So sorry guys. Sorry to my European friends. Okay, so this is an easy, there's no glue. There's no glue, there's no cutting. If you have an eight and a half by 11, or if you have an A4, or if you have a rectangular sheet of paper, this is going to work and it's easy. It is so easy. The first thing you do is fold it in half longwise. Let me get that up there. Come on. I'm having a little trouble today getting everything lined up. Um, if you have a bone folder, you probably might want to use that. If you don't have a bone folder, a card will work. The most difficult part of this, and it's not really all that difficult, is this part. Because you want to fold it in thirds. Now, could you get out your measuring piece and measure it and score it and do all of that? Absolutely. But I just fold it in thirds. You just fold it over and fold it in thirds. It's not that complicated. Then you're going to open it up and you're going to start folding in your edges. And when you fold in your corners, you don't go quite all the way to your fold mark. Leave a little bit of space in there so that you have room to fold later. When you fold in, you're folding in from the corner in towards the bulk of your paper. And when you do the two, it'll come like a point. Okay, so you want to make sure that you're pointing them in. So you're folding, you're taking your corner and you're folding it back towards your the bulk of your paper. Give it a good crease and not coming all the way to the bend. If you come all if you come all the way over, you're gonna end up getting it pretty um it's going to end up just bulking up, so you don't want to do that. Okay, at this point, you, well, let me show you the fold. There you go, you're done. 
you tuck one end into the other end and you can go this way depending upon your pattern if you like the other side better go that way it doesn't really matter i like to go this way just makes it easy i, I don't know i'm a right into left for some reason now if you notice one of the things that you can do is put your if you have a way to make your thumb notch i like to put a thumb notch in there because it lets people know that it's there and at this point if you wanted to um, go ahead and ink it up and if you ink it up i'm losing pieces of my i've really got to get a new one that's a good thing i'm headed out to the store today because i am losing pieces of this um all over the place but see if you ink it up and i'm i'm not going to ink the whole thing right now but if you ink it up you see that you can see it a little bit better all right let me show it to you again only this time we're going to use the quilt now the reason i chose this is because it has a, a part, part that i really don't want to see I, this is not something that's important to me i want to make sure my quilt is on the outside now could i cut this down so that i've only got this section and make it absolutely it would make a smaller pocket and if you have a larger sheet of paper you're going to make a bigger pocket. I know that probably sounds obvious, but there. I'm putting this so that my pattern is on the outside because I want to be able to see this pattern. Like I said, this is, takes the most fussing because I don't, I don't measure. I could, I suppose, but that just like is work. Okay. So there's my folds. Now I'm going to open it back up again. And I'm going to fold, take my corner and fold it towards the bulk. And the temp temptation is going to be to go differently, but you really can't. There's really no other way to fold it. So. You're going to end up doing it correctly, probably by default. I mean, I suppose even if you try to go that, if you try to go this way, you're going to go over your fold. So I think that might be why it's easier to go this or why I don't think you're going to mess it up. It's not something that's, it's really a very easy fold. Let me put my notch in. Fold it in, and we're done. And like I said, if you if you really don't want that extra piece, let's say I, I decide, you know what, I really don't like that. I want it to be there. I'll just cut that off that way. And now I have this. And because I have a smaller opening here, I'm going to put a smaller notch in it. I have to open it up to do it. Put a smaller notch in it. So there's a variation. I really like how that purple came out. And when you decorate it, you can cover over any pieces that you don't like. Now this one is small enough that I could stick it in a pocket um, or I could just plop it onto a page. Where's my journal? Give me my journal. This is the journal I am currently working on. I could just plop it onto the page just like that. Okay. Or I've, I don't think I have a pocket in here yet that's... No, I haven't put a pocket in this one yet. I could slide it in. All right. That's two. All right. Let's try the... Do I want the kingdom or do I want the... I think I want Europe on the outside. So we're going to do it again. This one has a ragged edge. I did not um, cut it off. This is a slightly different paper. This was a glossy um, magazine page, heavy magazine page, because it came out of a quilting magazine. Um, so it, when you, it, this is, I don't know what the, the weight on this one is, but it's not 65, it's probably 20. 
no, it's it's more than 20 because 20 is computer paper. So it's somewhere between 20 and 65. Um, and then this one is a glossy magazine page. This is out of a an atlas. It is not glossy. It is but a, a slightly heavier weight paper. It's probably close to this, although a little bit heavier weight. Again, you fold it in half the long way, fold in your corners. I know at this point you're probably thinking, I got it, I got it, I can do this. I hope by this point, if you haven't gotten a piece of paper, pause the video, go get a piece of paper and come fold along with me. Because I'm going to do this one and I'm going to do one more. So go ahead and pause and get your paper. Eight and a half by 11 or A4 or something of that sort. And then craft along with me. Dump all those out of there. Hang on. Let me empty my corner rounder. There. And then you're just tucking in and laying it flat. All right, one more, and then we're done. Now, this one is the heavier copy, uh, heavier computer paper. And I'm going to be honest, I'm, I'm the heavier paper, I think, is a little bit more difficult to work with. And what you have to be careful of, like with this one, you fold it in half and it splits. So now... I have a little bit of a white line down there, so this one will definitely need to be distressed on the edges. Although I might distress this one with purple and cover it over. Okay, let me get that down. It does a little bit better this way. This has also probably been in my stash a while. Okay. So the heavier paper is harder to work with. It's harder to fold. I mean, physically, it's harder to fold. Bring your corners over so they make a point. Making my point. There we go. I'm going to fold it up. I'm going to make my notch. And then I'm going to fold them in. And there it goes. All done. Let me grab my purple here for a moment. I do have some purple distress ink somewhere. Uh, my, my box is a bit of a mess. Oh my glory. There it is. And I'm just going to run that along the edge. So I want to show you one more thing that we can do with this. I just want to get rid of that white. I probably should open this up and do it. But this will do for now. You see, you get the point. Just color over. If you've got a, a dauber, you could use the dauber. So if you're using cardstock, just know that it's not quite as easy to use. Now, I said no glue. This is the only place, of course, when you glue it onto the page, you, you need glue. But one of the problems with this is that I'm trying to find, of course, where's a journal card when you want a journal card? There's one. Okay, this is one I made the other day. I like these. These are cute. This is from Paulette Slater. So when you put it in the back, you're fine. But then, because it, it goes down. But when you put it in here, it goes all the way through. And that's fine if you want it to do that. If you don't want it to do that, then just turn your, your card over. Put in your glue. And I'm using Fabri-Tac. You can use Art Glitter Glue. I don't know that a glue gun or a glue, glue gun. Well, glue gun would probably be fine. But uh, I don't know that... Uh, glue stick would do very well on here. I don't know that it would be strong enough to hold it because 
you want to be able to put your journal cards in and out and it's going to take it's going to take a little bit of a beating okay so now when i put it in there it doesn't go well it goes all the way down because i haven't let the glue stick yet okay in the meantime while that's sticking you can i don't know if, well maybe with the white you can see where the different spaces are so you have here and you have here which is which sticks you have here which sticks and you have here which sticks did I get my fans in the way for that? Here, 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 which now sticks because I have the glue there. Here, which is not opening because I don't have it stuck to anything, which makes a nice pocket. And then if you want a sixth pocket, when you put it in your journal, when you put it in your journal, now you have a sixth pocket, and now I've messed up my end. Well, we'll fix that later. All right, so there you go. That's how to make these easy pockets. And look, I mean, look how we've been at this for what, 15 minutes and have made one, two, three. Where's my, where'd my purple one go? Did I leave it in the book? I left it in the book. One, two, three, four in 15 minutes. And that's with me talking and goofing around. So, yeah, these are the, an easy mass make. And then you have them to go right in your journal, whenever you want them, and decorate them up. I'm not going to decorate them today. This was one that I did from a scrapbooking journal, and I really like it. It was, um, I did it to make sure I could use a magazine page, and it works just fine. But this was out of a scrapbooking journal. There's a picture of a kid on the back. I don't need the kid. But I like the fact that it's got the school stuff on here. So there's, you know, plus one equals two and the alphabet and some apples and a chalkboard. I think that's really cool. That'll be really neat in a school journal. All right. If you're enjoying this video, please make sure you hit the subscribe button and hit the like button to let YouTube know that you're, you're enjoying them. And... Um, I guess that's it for this Maker Monday. Uh, maybe we should call it Mass Make Maker Monday. In any case, have a great week, and this is Cindy signing off.